Hello everyone! Welcome back to another update on the auto controller for Pokemon Sword and Shield. So far I haven't been tracking my changes that I've made so far because I didn't put my project on GitHub obviously. So I've made this readme file here to record my changes. Uh, it also contains like information um, like the Wicom day spoofing glitch. Um, there's also video instruction if you want video instruction on that. And we have the change log of what the changes I've made so far. And the last one here should matches the name of the zip file as well. Of course, there are also credits and special thanks for the people who helped me testing these programs. So, without further ado, let's start with the updates on the old program first. So, the Watt Farmer. So I have a person that report to me that if you run this program long enough, it will still crash the game. Because apparently, even if you skip one day and then go back to the game, it will refresh the weather, and I thought that would not crash the game. But if you do this enough of times, this will still crash the game. So I've made a change where every 50 loops, this program will save for you. So even if the game crashes and then breaks the program, you will still have the watts collected from the last time you save. So there's a small optimization I've made uh, from the last update. So if you remember, how this program works before is that it rolls first slot backwards and then press OK and then go back to the first slot, roll forward again and then press OK. And then one of these changes will register one day skip in the game. So what I've done is that I make use of the sync time. So when you press the date and time here, it will sync the time and then unsync again. Then go to the first slot, roll one day forward and then press OK. And then that will register a day skip as well. So that saves about one second. But if you run this program long enough, it will save a lot of time. So let's just do a demonstration real quick. So before that, I'm going to showcase how you can disconnect from a server without taking the switch out from the dock. So this only applies when you are using Wi-Fi on a dock switch. If you're using the Ethernet adapter, you better off just take the switch out from the dock and then put it back in again, because that's just way faster. But if you're on Wi-Fi, here's what you can do. So I'm just gonna connect to the internet and find someone to battle. So when a trainer is fine, go to your profile and add friends, and then try add local friends and this will disconnect you from the server. So that does the exact same thing. And then when you go back to the game, now the Wicom glitch is active. There you go. So let me put my Arduino in. Alright, so now it goes to the system settings, go to date and time, sync and unsync, go forward a day, and then you can collect watts. So if you go back and read the program here, it says no doubt if the today's date is the end of month for the for the European version of the date arrangement, and then if it's or December for the US, the first loop will break. And this is normal. The reason why this will happen is because uh, when you sync the time, let's just say it's 31st of January, right? So if it, if it goes one day forward, it will become the 1st of January, which doesn't register as a skip. But the next time, when it syncs back the date to the current date, so it goes back to the 31st of January, that one will register as a day skip. So the first time this program runs, it will fail. Uh, but after that, it will continue as normal. Alright, so next let's talk about the Auto Lotto. So this is one just a small change that I made, uh, or rather a small addition. So here it is. So you can set optional day skip here. So a person suggests to me that, you know, why not make it so that we can day skip for the shiny den while we grind the Auto Lotto. So I've made the optional day skip here. So if you put three days before how many days you need to skip to the shiny frame, the Auto Lotto will stop over there. But because this program takes 23 seconds per lotto. If you're going for 60k, then it will take 17 days to finish. So I still recommend you to do the day skip for the den separately and then do the lotto the other time. 
So I didn't include the sync and unsync optimization from the Watt Farmer here because if you remember, if the date is 31st for European or December for the US, the first time it will break the program. So I have to make sure this is consistent. So now on to the new program. So first we have the Berry Farmer. So this is obviously very similar to the Watt Farmer. And um, if you read the description here, you must stand in front of Berry Tree, duh. Stay away from the Greed and Bridgefield and Stony Wilderness. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, so I'm talking about specifically the these three Berry Trees in between Bridgefield and Stony Wilderness. And there's always a Greedon right here. And you don't want to run into him while collecting berries. So I recommend you to go like behind this Greedon and he will never get past here. So you can just collect the berries over here. So you're recommended to not ride on a bike, but I made it so it still works even if you are riding a bike. And obviously there's also a small chance that the program will break if you run it long enough. So this program will also save every 50 tries. And this one includes the sync and unsync optimization. So again, the end of the month for the European or December for the US, the first loop will break. So again, it starts by going to the settings, go to date and time, sync and unsync, go for a day, press OK, and then go back to the game and then talk to the berry tree. So what this does is that it only talks to the berry tree once and then stop collecting berries. Uh, the reason why I did that is because uh, if you do, if you shake the berry tree more than once, there's always a chance a wild Pokemon will fall on top of your head and then breaks the program if you encounter a Pokemon. So that's why you have to avoid a Greedon as well. Uh, because that will break the program. So if you only talk to the berry tree once, uh, it will never drop a Pokemon on top of your head. So yeah. Alright, so next we have the box release program. So originally I wasn't planning to make this program because if you use Pokemon Hope, you can mass release anyway, but this program is easy enough to do, so I'm, I just make it anyway. So, let me just go to my box, and then let's look at the description here. So, you cannot have any eggs in the boxes, because obviously you can't release eggs, and you must completely fill all release boxes except for the last rightmost box. So, what this means is that, so I have four boxes of Cramrad here, and the first three here are full, and the last box is not full. So that is still fine. That That's because the program will release the Pokemon one by one from left to right, top to bottom. So after this point here, uh, this will break the program, but this is fine because the whole box is empty anyway. And you just stop the program after that manually. Alright, so... You have to set the cursor mode to select, obviously, so you have to set the cursor to red. Otherwise, you can't release the Pokemon that way. And you must start the program on the top left Pokemon in the box. And the boxes to be released should be next to each other on the right side. So arranged like this, all next to each other. And it takes about a minute and 26 seconds to release 30 Pokemons in the box. And this is where you set how many box you want to release. So in our case, that will be four. So I'm going to save. So before you start your program, I would recommend you to save the game. Because just in case you release something that you don't want, you can always reload the save and then get your Pokemon back. So let's go to the first box. That has to be the leftmost box and then goes to the change script settings. And it will start releasing the Pokemon for you. Alright, so we're at the last box now. And after it releases the last Pokemon, it will break the program. So this is where you want to take your, pro take your Arduino out. Because it will start doing weird stuff. It won't break anything in your box. But just to make sure you take the Arduino out at that time. So if you want to avoid that, you can just release one less box and then just release the last box manually. 
and this will have no problem at all. And that's box release. Alright, so finally we have the auto host. So this is probably the most requested program for me to make so far from the feedback that I received. So I suppose there's a lot of people that want to host an array without doing that manually, I suppose. So let's start by looking at the instruction again. So you must stand in front of the active den with what's already collected. Be careful if the time is sync and past midnight, you will start able to collect watts. So this is why I said with the watts already collected, uh, because my program is not designed to collect watts for you before hosting the raid. Uh, and that will break the program if you can collect watts. Uh, you must not have connected to the internet at the beginning. You are advised to have wired connection for stable and fast internet. So because we're involved internet connection in this program, if anything gets slowed down or doesn't connect it right, it will also break the program. Um, so if you're using Wi-Fi, then it might connect it to the internet very slow and then it will also break the program. But there, you can fix it, but I still recommend it. Uh, you use wire connection. If you use Wi-Fi, you probably need to adjust the connection time below in code. So this is where this is where it referring to the internet connection time over here. So uh, nine seconds should be way over enough for wired connection to be connected to the internet. So if you are somehow using Wi-Fi or slow internet, then you can adjust this time over here. All right. So this program relies on the clients to be ready before the one minute mark. Otherwise, the rate fails. So I don't want to make my program to wait the whole three minutes because most people should be ready by that time and that it will waste a lot of time. You can also adjust this time here. So if you scroll down over here, this is where it starts to rate. And 5200 will wait until the one minute mark and 2600 will wait until two minute mark. So you can adjust the time, uh, but make sure don't set it to over three minutes because if you're, my program only gets ready for the host after it hits this one minute or two minute mark. And if you're, the host is not ready after all the time passed by, uh, the ray will also fail. So if you were to change this to until, you know, the last 10 seconds, just make sure you don't go over the uh, zero minute mark. All right, so the program will close the game when the raid starts and it may freeze on client size for 10 to 15 seconds. So apparently, if I just simply close the game without disconnecting from the server, the client will freeze. But if they wait long enough, it will unfreeze for them. But sometimes it can also soft lock forever, so they might have to rejoin the raid again. And if you use the default settings, which uh, wait until the one minute mark, it takes about three minutes, 25 seconds to host the raid. That includes the soft resetting, and then go back and then connect the internet and all the shenanigans. And now this is where the fun begins. Use optional link code or not. So if you set this to true, you can set the optional link code down here. So for example, if your link code is 4501, you have to follow this format here. So 4, 5, 0, 1. So that's how you set your link code over here. So I also include an option to use random link code. So if you set use link code to true and use random code to true as well, it will generate different link codes every time it raises this host. Well, sort of. So if you see it here, uh, my seed is equal to 8. So my seed range is 0 to 255. Same seed will always generate the same link code sequence. So what that means is that because computer uses pseudo random number generator, right? So let's just say if the seed 8, the first raid will generate 1111, the second raid 2222, uh, and then 2333 three, three, and then so on and so forth. This will go random forever as long as you don't unplug the board. But the moment you unplug the board and then put it back in again with the same seat, it will start from 1111 and then 2222 two, two, two all over again. Just so start the sequence from the beginning. So this is just a bit of fun. If you want to have different lane codes every time you host a raid, you can do that as well. So let me just do a demonstration with the random lane code and then set the seed to whatever, like, uh, 169. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, yes. So if you look at the range here, it says the range is until 1,103. So I said before that if the range exceeds 0 times FFF, the program will not work. And that's not actually true. Uh, so if we open the 
auto host hex file in the HXD. Uh, so because the size of the flash memory is 12 kilobytes, the maximum size in hex should be 3000. So this is literally the, the last line over here. If I fill up this row here, this program will break. So I had to optimize my program so much in order to squeeze everything in between 12 bytes. Alright, so back to the game now. We are in front of the den. And let's go to change grip and order. And start hosting raids. Uh, so obviously I'm setting link code and I'm not testing with anyone else. So nobody's gonna join my raid, but that's okay. So now it starts by connecting to the internet. It does have quite a number of delays because if you connect to the internet, it will start loading NPCs and it might uh, break the program if I wait, don't wait long enough. So that's the first random link code that we have and it will start inviting others. And now let's wait until the one minute mark. Alright, so we're approaching the one minute mark here. So by this time, all your clients should get ready. Otherwise, it will break the program, um, and then that's too bad for them. They can't join the raid because they just took their sweet ass time to <laughs> uh, pick their Pokemon, and they took way too long. So yeah, and now it starts the raid, and then it will wait for a while, and then it will restart the game for you. Alright, so now we're hosting a second rate, and the link code will be different, so 6552. So, at any time, if you pluck out the Arduino and plug it back in with the same seat, uh, so for example 169, uh, the first link code will be the same as the last time, which is, I think is 5745, and then the next one will be 6552 again. So, that's the auto host program. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you paid attention to my video, uh, you will see what the next program I'm working on, so uh, stay tuned. So I'll see you next time. Peace.